how, how did you start formulating like the kind of style of storytelling that Dark Side of the Ring uh, employs and and did it come from the title Dark Side of the Ring or, or, or did that come later? Ah. No, the, uh, the Dark Side of the Ring title actually came um, at the last possible second before oh. we had to deliver the name. Of, uh, at the end of 2018, before, when we had to deliver season one as a finished product, because uh, we, we actually couldn't come up with a name. We had the hardest time coming up with a name. Oh. And uh, it was actually my mother who came up with the title Dark Side of the Ring. Um, <laughs> so thanks, Mom. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the style of the show... Um, <clears throat> was, um, well, it all started with the Bruiser Brody episode. That was a story that uh, we actually just kind of dreamed that maybe we would just make a, a documentary about the whole Bruiser Brody story, and that would be the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, it, of course, it evolved into being a, a full series. And um, the story, like the like the, the Bruiser Brody story, there were so many like interesting shoot interviews about it on the internet. Um, and it just was a story that had fallen by the wayside. You know, not a lot of wrestling fans were really uh had really known about it or had forgotten about it or just kind of it just kind of fell out of the out of the wrestling public consciousness yeah. and also like if that incident had happened today in today's world like in a wwe locker room somewhere i mean that would be headline news everywhere yeah so so it, it just was kind of like this idea of wanting to tell a, a true crime story in the world of wrestling we thought there was something really appealing about the mixture of those two worlds mm -hmm. and our favorite documentary uh, or one of our favorite documentaries is errol morris's the thin blue line and uh that film is just a masterwork of style um you know a lot you know it, it's really kind of one of the benchmarks of modern documentary filmmaking where you know, every frame of it is impeccable in terms of all the interviews are completely cinematic. The reenactments have just incredible style to them. They're 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 very like uh, impressionistic, surreal, noirish, uh, and they're just really really cool. And um, and the music uh, kind of carries the momentum of the show. Like yeah. like it, it it like the music is really what drives it. And so we wanted to kind of emulate that, and uh, and we wanted to kind of. We were just were really influenced by it, and that's kind of what we wanted the show to feel like was that, and so um, or more maybe more of even a more modern version of that. So that was the the idea of what it would be like because we always wanted to incorporate reenactments because because we liked the Thin Blue Line and, and films like that, and uh, it was a way to illustrate you know areas of the story, aspects of the story that you can't cover with footage or. You know, because a lot of these stories happen outside the ring when, when cameras yeah. aren't on. So that was kind of one of the things we wanted to do. Yeah, that was the, the stylistic approach. Hmm.